The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Pandora's Box 2D Warping today. Um, I would just uh, like to introduce Thomas, my colleague. Uh, he will help me um, answering your questions. Please ask um, if you have any questions in the chat field. Um, Hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> so let's start. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> with our webinar content. So we will talk about the warping today. What is warping and the differences between um, 2D uh, warping and uh, 3D mapping. Um, and after that, we will talk about the basics on uh, projection, the important points. And um, at the end of our webinar, we will uh, work together on the curve screen you can see in the camera. Um, with one uh, projector. So let's start. What is warping? We talk about the keystone um, in the last webinar, um, the keystone and the soft edge. So the keystone is the linear distortion uh, and it can uh, only uh, be used on uh, a flat screen. Um, it is actually the horizontal and vertical correction. Um, so we cannot do anything more with the keystone. The keystone is only limited to a flat screen. Um, and this is where we have to use the 2D warping. Um, the 2D warping is for the nonlinear distortion and um, it could be used for um, any real object. So um, like you can see, um, on the projector here, um, it is uh, projecting on a sphere. So that's um, possible to do it also with a 2D warp. Um, and the 2D warp um, is um, where we have to correct, uh, and we can use it for the correction in, um, in the two dimensional um, distortion. So um, this is where we have to use the X and Y axis for the correction. Um, actually, it is for, um, sorry, um, it is, um, actually what we have to do with the warping is to, um, put every pixel to the correct position, um, so that's, um, at the end it should look, um, uh, in horizontal and vertical, um, um, lines perfect and linear um, to the end result um, and this is where we have to use the warping so we have also the possibility to move the single points there which we don't have uh, with keystone um, let's go to the next slide um, the 3d mapping um, the 3d mapping um, is where we have to use the uh, 3D uh, space for it. So we have to extend our um, coordinate system with a Z axis. And there we have, um, you have to imagine, we have the 3D, the real 3D object, um, like you can see, um, which is the cube here. Um, and we have to find out um, the projector position and the orientation of the projector and the way it's looking to our 3D object, um, including our opening um, uh, angle, um, the field of view. Um, that's uh, why we have to use the 3D mapping um, if we need to uh, find out the projector position and the orientation. Um, and it is just um, what we are simply doing here is to Pandora's box camera position and orientation to um, define the relation um, to virtual and real um, real space. Okay, um, do we have any questions so far, Thomas, to these topics? Uh, not yet, Pari. There's uh, no question, actually. Thank you. Then we go to our next slide, the basics on our projection. 
So what is the best position um, of the projector? Um, we have to find out the best position of our projector because uh, we want to have um, as less as it, as it can be the distortion. Um, um, and this is very important to find out the uh, best position of uh, our projector. Um, the next very important thing is um, to find out the right and optimal focus point. Um, so if we have different depths or uh, we have screwed angles, um, then um, um, maybe we can use um, more projectors for um, um, for um, the focus, for a better focus, um, or um, <clears throat> Um, we have to find our comp uh, we have to compromise uh, between um, different depths and uh, and find out the best um, or, or optimal focus the efficient focus uh, here um, so it's very important um, to um, to focus it um, focus the projector before we start um, and the next point is the native resolution of the projector um, so um, Plus, um, plus the aspect ratio, um, and um, this is actually just something to do with our pixel density. Um, so the unit of the pixel density is um, pixel per inch, and um, one inch is here. Um, it means um, two uh, centimeters, two point uh, five four centimeters. And the question here is for the pixel density, how much resolution is needed for the texture um, or how far or close is the point of view? Um, and um, if you have um, screwed angles, um, it leads uh, more to pixel deformation. Um, and we have to find out the pixel density so that that's um, um, has something to do with our native resolution and the area we are projecting on it. Um, another point is the um, even light distortion. So, uh, for example, if you have two projectors um, um, and um, the result we want to uh, reach is at the end, so the goal um, is to have um, um, a projection which is as even as it could be. Um, that means if you have different projectors, uh, we have to ask ourselves, do they have the um, um, color difference? Um, do they have the same quality? Um, um, is, it, um, is it the same lens we are um, using on both of these projectors? Um, how about what is about the um, distance of the projectors um, and so on? So um, we have to correct um, all of these points um, to have an even light uh, on uh, on the projectors. So um, or work if we have color differences, working with RGB effects in Pandora's box to correct it in the pan in in the projectors somehow uh, to have at the end. Uh, even result. The next point is our black level. Um, so sometimes you can see on the overlap area if we have two projectors and we have an overlap area, the black is on the overlap area a little bit brighter than um, than the sides. So uh, what we can do here is to use maybe the function inside of the projector or um, we can also use a white, a white image in Pandora's box to correct it um, and um, to um, um, do the sides a little bit brighter um, and um, match to, to the overlap area. So um, this is what we have also to think about it if it's um, distorting, um, if it's a um, um, if it's a point we have to uh, we have to correct or uh, or not. Um, another important um, thing on our projection is um, the test pattern or the test picture. 
uh, because the projection is uh, actually if you have multiple projectors um, you will have and you want to show one image or one one video in there uh, you will have a larger texture um, so there we have to calculate our soft edge areas if we have um, um, the soft edge area and um, the resolution of our test uh, pattern are its matter and also the aspect ratio of the texture is very important because it has to be in the correct aspect ratio. Um, also for the test pattern um, are important if we are using cycles, colors, lines, um, grids, um, text and at the end um, it is a very important point because um, there we can find out if we have calculated everything right and we can use it as a template for our content creator um, to um, create our content in this um, uh, um, in this uh, in this style uh, with the same resolution or aspect ratio or um, the um, overlap areas we have um, um, we have calculated um, next point is our point of view um, it is very important if you have a big projection and um, there are a lot of people looking around um, um, and um, if we have to um, um, the question is um, if we have um, multiple point of view the different point of views uh, we have we can look to this projection um, they have to look good so um, at the end um, is what we have to do as um, as an operator, um, we have to warp from the viewer's position. Um, so the viewer's position is the point where the most of the people would see this projection, because we cannot make everybody happy or um, um, just uh, warp everything uh, from different point of views. Um, um, and um, take care about all of these uh, different point of views. Um, the only uh, thing we can do is uh, to work from the most, uh, um, the, the better position or um, the position the viewers are, um, um, are more, um, the more people are looking from this point. So this is why we have to find out this point of view. Um, I, I know most uh, most of you are working with projectors and uh, doing the warping and soft edge or keystoning within the projectors. Um, what I just wanted to um, let you know that um, of course you can do warping and soft edge and keystoning uh, within a projector uh, if the projector has these tools. Um, but if you in compare it to uh, to the media server workflow um, a media server has a faster response and um, um, personally to me it's um, it is a better or flexible work uh, uh, flow if you're doing it with a media server you can change things faster or correct things faster um, in the media server than in, in the projector but um, at the end you decide where you want to do it. Um, um, the next very important point is the factory reset. Um, please do the factory reset always if you start projecting um, uh, or warp, warping um, or you want to um, start or you have multiple projectors and you want to start keystoning or warping or doing the 3D uh, mapping um, because um, it could be that uh, some settings are safe there like keystone like um, more uh, warp or um, color uh, changes a lot of things that uh, could um, somehow influence your work at the end um, 
and it's better to not to have it and have a clean uh, projector or begin with a clean um, clean setting. Um, mostly our, there are lens shift um, uh, optimal correction there um, so please just um, do a factory reset on all of the projectors you are using. Um, Thomas, do we have any questions to these topics? Yeah, there are some which I try to answer directly in the questions tool. Um, I think it's too large to put them in the in the live session here. So you can head on there. Thank you. Okay. So let's go to the next topic. Our projection planning, which is very important. Uh, for a projection planning, we have to um, do our content calculation. And um, of course, uh, as I mentioned um, before, we have to find out the uh, correct aspect ratio with um, the overlap areas we have calculated before. Um, I have also talked about this um, topic in the Keystone and Softledge webinar. Please, if you didn't see it, um, have a look into our YouTube channel. Um, regarding to this, um, and also how much mm, how much um, machines you have, uh, or how much um, projectors you have, um, or what kind of hardware you are using, as the question, what is the format you are using, or what you can choose, please. There, also there, you have to look um, into our performance sheets um, and the hardware uh, specs you have, the performance kit uh, of the hardware. It's very important to choose the right uh, format for your uh, uh, project. And um, it's also very important to have test files. I know the content is the last thing we uh, we might get um, when we are on the project uh, on production, um, but um, if you are using um, test um, uh, sorry um, uh, sequence uh, image sequences, um, then you can have probably ten frames of these image sequences for your pre-production or pre-programming. Um, that's um, very cool to have because then you can um, invest your time to do your pre-programming with these files and um, also you will save time um, for um, yeah for the on-site or last minute changes. Checkpoints. Um, um, these checkpoints are very important if you um, want to start with warping or keystoning. Um, you have to check the uh, projector position before you start with keystone or before you start with warping um, because afterwards uh, you don't have to touch anything not the screen to, and, uh, to not move or touch the screen or the projector during or after uh, warping or keystoning um, so please do this uh, settings before you start uh, with these um, adjustments because afterwards you cannot move anything or you have to do everything again. Um, and the focus, uh, it's very important to focus it before or um, doing the brightness, um, setting the brightness before you start with warping or keystoning. Um, the next very important point is to measure and mark um, your areas. Um, like you can see here in the camera, I have measured my part and I will show you what I have measured or what I have marked there. But um, if you invest your time uh, for the measurements and also for marking and taping uh, your, um, your areas, uh, before you're starting with warping, um, then you will um, save time during warping and also um, create a better result at the end um, because um, 
that um, um, that that's where you have a reference point or reference line uh, for the warping and you can set your projector border and also the linearity there um, so it will just save your time any questions so far no actually no more questions thank you okay Let's go to our demo setup. Um, as you can see on the curve screen, I'm projecting only with one projector and the projector is connected to the DVI and, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> the compact player and the compact player is connected to my laptop and my laptop is the manager. Um, here, um, I have talked about the measurements and the marking um, scenario. So what we have to know is our native resolution. Um, here's my native resolution, 1280 by 800 pixels. So, and um, the size, um, um, sorry, the curve um, screen we mentioned, or the length is um, 110 um, centimeter and the height is um, 37 centimeter. So, if the height is 37 centimeter, it would be equal to my um, 800 pixels in height, the native resolution. Um, so I have to find out the width of my uh, native resolution. How much uh, centimeter should I plan for my uh, uh, for this site for the hundred uh, for for the 1280 pixels? So. I just calculated for you. Um, um, I just multiplied the uh, 1280 um, to the result of um, the division 37 centimeters divided by um, 800 pixels, and it just get and gave me the result um, 59. Um, 0.2 centimeters which is um, here what we can see what I have marked here so just for help I um, also um, marked um, and measured the middle points for the sides and also for uh, for the top and bottom because um, I wanted to be accurate on my linearity. You cannot do it also um, if you have a one uh, projector or you have multiple projectors, um, or if you do not want uh, to mark it or you have not the possibility to mark it because um, you cannot reach the wall, whatever it is, uh, you can use a um, laser. A laser with um, the horizontal and vertical line um, as a straight line as a reference for yourself for the middle. Okay, then let's go to the next slide. Um, to the warping in Pandora's box. Um, the first way is to using the mesh editing mode. Um, of the preview and it's uh, only possible to do it in the version 6. Um, we will talk about the mesh editing mode today um, but there is also another solution which we have used uh, with the other versions um, like version 5, um, the warper tool and the warper tool has um, not only the 2D warping, um, there are also possible to do the UV mapping, also the 3D um, mapping uh, is possible there. So what we are, the Warper tool is an external tool um, which we can open on um, each uh, output uh, uh, we have and warp it in 2D or um, do the 3D uh, mapping. Um, but for now, since we have the mesh editing mode uh, in the preview, um, we are not using the Warper tool anymore for 2D warping. It is only for 3D mapping. 
and you wouldn't uh, talk about um, the warper tool today, um, uh, we will just uh, follow the first uh, mesh editing mode uh, and the uh, yeah, and the functions there. Okay, mesh editing mode is a mode in the preview, so we can choose it in the preview. Um, if we just select this icon or click on this icon, uh, this is the mesh editing mode on the left side. And you see on the top side a lot of buttons here, um, and these are functions we can use um, for modifying the, uh, the meshes. So the first one is um, to modify the sub mesh. I will talk about the sub mesh later. Um, if you have created one. Um, on the mesh file, we can also have um, some points, some control points, they are called FFT points, and there we um, can also select these uh, icon to only modify the FFT points. Um, the next um, icon is to modify the vertex, so the mesh points. Um, and the next three buttons here are actually only for move, rotate and scale um, the points. Um, so for this, you can also use the shortcuts uh, one to two for move, rotate and scale. Um, and here you can choose your created warp file or mesh file um, if you have created one like there. Um, and um, select this. If you have multiple mesh files, you can just select and filter only one to work and modify this one. Um, here you can also um, lock the um, the axis, and there you can show the gizmo. Uh, if you click on this, the handle gizmo. Um, this uh, icon is only for uh, showing the wireframe, the FFT wireframes, the um, the FFT visibility, um, and the next bottom here is also for mesh visibility. And this little bottom is when you have multiple outputs and you want to have the mesh visibility on all of them. So we talk about the mesh file. Um, we have to create this mesh file, of course. Uh, it was just a preview I have um, shown. Um, the editable mesh in, uh, in Pandora's box can be created in two ways. Um, one of them is uh, if you just click, uh, do a right click on in the project tree and um, create an editable mesh and we will do it together. Um, when we have to, when we when we go to the next uh, step, um, and then you can as a we just if you're just doing a right click um, in the project tree, uh, you can create the editable mesh, and then you can assign it to a layer, um, like here. This is the media where you can place your picture or video, and here is the, for the mesh file. Um, the next way is to, if you want to use it on the output, um, you can just enter the output and click on ed uh, edit warp mesh and it will automatically create for you, like you can see here, a mesh folder, uh, a warp meshes folder, and inside of this folder you will see all the warp output mesh files, all the editable meshes which, uh, which are created automatically for the output. So if we have a look into the mesh file, we can open it and you can see there is um, a surface created. So uh, this surface is our first mesh file, uh, which is inside of these editable mesh because we have, um, uh, we can have multiple uh, surfaces in one editable mesh. Um, if you have a look into the first surface and select it, you can go to the inspector and then 
there we can set up the segments in X and Y. So um, the vertical and horizontal lines um, for our grid within the uh, mesh file. And um, we can set the size, the resolution uh, of our editable mesh or what it has to be. Um, we can also set the position if we know the position for um, the rotation. Um, we can also, if we have done changes on this surface and uh, we don't like it anymore or we have to do it again, we can also set, um, reset it, reset everything there, reset all the modifiers or enable, disable them. Um, and here at the end, we can um, set up the control point uh, counts in X and Y. This is where we have to uh, set our FFT points. Um, yeah, and I will show you with the with our example, how and why to set another number here. Um, Thomas, do we have any questions so far? Uh, just one. Um, can I, uh, do I have to use uh, the output mesh file for the output only or are there different possibilities? No, you don't have to use it. Um, you can also create an editable mesh um and then assign it to an output um but if you click on the uh bottom within the output it's got there the edit warp mesh uh, it will automatically create for you um an editable mesh which has the uh correct resolution of the output so it would just take the resolution of the output but um, you can also use the um, editable mesh you have created um, within the uh, project tree on an output or on a layer. Great, thank you, that was it for now. Okay. So let's have a look into Pandora's box. Um, I just have created um, on the first queue, you can see um, there is a, in the camera, um, oops, I think the camera is somehow Please. <laughs> Sorry for that. Hmm. Okay, now it's ready. Um, I just created an editable mesh within the uh, project uh, project tree. So just again to do it uh, twice. You right click within the project uh, project tree and add editable mesh. Just add another one, and there we can give another name to this editable mesh and save it um, within our project on the asset and within the assets folder. Um, so we will have our assets there. Test mesh. It has the format uh, CMS Edge, uh, so there it is. And you can see I can open it and go to the surface. And it has the default um, values. It is always, um, created in the resolution of your manager or your master. Um, for me, it's 9020 by 1080, so this is why it's created in this resolution. And there, I can change the segments. Let's go to the beginning. 
there, there's nothing. So I can assign it into a layer and can go to the mesh editing mode. Zoom a little bit out and you see it's uh, another resolution. Um, and of course I can change it to my output resolution. Oh, sorry. And there it is. If I just assign the geometry picture there. So you will also see the grid, um, the segments. Let's go again to the surface. Um, the segments are actually um, defining our mesh points or so the vertex we can um, modify afterwards. Uh, but for this small screen, it's a little bit too much. Um, so I would just take the half of it, 16, 9. So I can work better with this grid. Um, so there it is. This is what you have to do at the beginning of your um, warping task. And also here again, we go back to the FFT points. Um, it's very important if you're working on a corpse screen or uh, you're working on a flat screen. When you're working on the flat screen, it's better um, to um, work with these default values. Um, but you have, if you have a corpse screen, um, you have more uh, possibilities um, to work or a better possibility to work with more FFTs. So um, like here I can change it again to five and I will have, as you can see here, five uh, points in X. Uh, I can also change it here if I uh, think that's necessary because it's a curve screen. Um, but if the curve screen has a, it depends um, if you, um, if your curve screen has a um, big, uh, big curve, so like, like a big, uh, big angle, uh, then you will need more FFDs there because um, you have to be uh, flexible and um, you do not want to touch every single mesh point and what is the FFD is doing is just um, if we just move one of these FFDs it will you can see um, affect the whole mesh so um, that's very important um, if we just go to uh, to the vertex modifier and uh, select one point, one single point, just zoom in, um, and move the single point, you can see it is only um, affecting on the four neighbor, um, neighbor lines. Um, and that's it. So working with FFDs uh, will make our um, yeah, um, our work a little bit um, um, give us more possibility um, and it will just, um, yeah, make it a little bit better um, than working with a single, with single points or, or touch every single point there. So very important for the curve screen to use more um, FFT points uh, and have this flexibility um, to working by, by these points and do as much as we can with the FFT points um, and then work with the single points if, if it's needed. If we have like a, an overlap area and we need to touch the single points within the overlap areas. Thomas, any questions so far? 
Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how it's meant. So there's the question, how to delete a grid in the manager mesh grid. And I think it's the question for the visibility. Maybe you can show the visibility uh, for the mesh and FFD grids again. Yeah. Um, so I just, you can see here I am in the FFD modifier mode and the FFDs are on. So I can see the FFDs, uh, they are visible. If I turn them off, we can see only the orange points, the FFD points, but not the FFD lines anymore. So, um, and here again, um, this is now, these are the um, the grid, um, it's the segments. We have set it up here within the inspector. So if I turn them on, you can see the grid in the preview and also in uh, in our on our, on our client. Um, this is yeah. This is how you you turn them off or on. Does it answer your question? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. You can also change the um, editing wireframes. So, yeah, if you have multiple um, uh, multiple projectors and you are working on multiple projectors, um, then you can um, use the editing wireframes the to change the color here um, to yeah to have a between um between the uh, overlap areas to have another color and to see um, on which um, grid or on which uh, editable mesh you have to work. Okay. So and here you can see um, the toggle wireframe visibility for all outputs. So I, I just have one, um, so I cannot demonstrate it, uh, but if you, maybe if I go there to just choose the outputs, Sorry, I reset it on the layer. I just put an editable mesh and a test mesh on another output. Um, yeah, and um, picture, assign it to the layer. So and I can go to the mesh editing mode. And there you can see here, I can now only see the wireframes on one output but there with this icon I can have both um, wireframes on all of these outputs okay so let's go back oh that's good and that's happened <laughs> um, when you are in the editable mesh mode and uh, you choose a preview or an output um, to work on it and you delete the uh, mesh file uh, which was placed there um, then it will get this red point so it will just show you there is no editable mesh to modify right if I go to the layer mode, it will just disappear. Cool. Any questions so far, Thomas? Uh, mm, I don't think so. I tried to answer one just yet, and I think that's it for now. Okay, cool. Um, so let's go to our test mesh and assign it to the layer or we can also assign it to the output 
um, the output number one. And here is the geometry picture again. So I go back to the mesh editing mode and enter back again to the surface inspector. Um, I just modified the FFD, but um, I just want to reset it again because um, I wanted to start from the beginning. Here I can set up four by five point, uh, four by four, five by four points. Um, so we'll have an extra line there or maybe five. Just like it better to have more FFTs than lesser FFTs. Um, okay, what I can see here on, um, uh, on my projection is that I have my uh, reference points, so my, my markers, um, but the projector is um, projecting a little bit um, off. So it was the best zoom I could um, and the best distance I could um, do it. I cannot um, zoom it anymore uh, because then I will lose um, on the top side this part. Um, so you have to be careful that you cover everything you have to cover uh, with the projector. So um, I cannot move this projector anymore. So what I can do here is to start with the uh, warping. Um, after setting up the FFT points, I can just select one point. You can move them and select select one of them with the mouse and move move them also with the mouse. But um, you can also use the arrow keys. If you um, hold hold the control key and um, use the arrow key to down, like here again, and then you will select these points. So I just select the um, the left side, um, and now um, you have to set it to to the move mode. If you want to move these points um, to uh, to right, um, or you can select all of them with Control A, um, and then select the uh, scale um, and scale it a little bit down, or you can just select all of these FFT points and. Um, then press the uh, press the key uh, number three. It will just jump to the scale mode. Um, and now uh, you can use tab to scale it down a little bit slowly. So with the arrow keys. Um, if you're using um, tab and holding tab and alt together you will do uh, bigger steps, so like this. Um, and if you're just holding tab, just, just small steps there. Um, so I just wanted to scale it like, like this. A little bit. Oh, now I can move it a little bit down. So I have now to correct the top side only. So I begin with the first um, point from the left side. I can just take this and and um, um, and put it to to the um, corner of my um, my marker. But as I want to have a um, good linearity. I can actually here take the second um, point with me 
to just make the lines a little bit straighter. So, and the middle line, the middle red line should be also on my marker. So again, to the top side, second point. Also here, the middle point to down. So I just trying to fit the first top line. to the screen. So then the bottom side Actually I can only start with the borders and then do the linearity. Um but I can also um pay attention a little bit to, to this uh, linearity and um, just do it while I'm doing I'm doing the the borders um, so okay now the borders are matching to uh, my my markers um, but now we have to set up the linearity. You can see um, the middle line, the middle red line is not really accurate in the middle. Um, somehow um, has a weird shape. So here I have to move a little bit down with these points. Also for the lines, you can see they are now straight uh, I have also to check these cycles they should also look like cycles and they should have the same size uh, on each side because as you can see on the left side and on the right side we have um, these these small cycles and um, they should have also the same size we can also measure it at the end um, So now the middle red line is matching my um, to my um, markers. And also the middle point here is matching there and it seems to me that the cycles has also the same size okay that's done. Um, it's very important uh, when you're done with or you have done uh, the first step of your warping um, 
then to leave the editable mesh mode. So to go back to the layer mode again, to save your um, changes within the editable mesh mode. Um, within the editable mesh, um, you have created this test mesh I have created. Um, so it will only save the changes if you just leave the mode and go back again to the mode for um, changes you have to do um, again. Um, of course, if you save it on the timeline, like here, it will be saved on the timeline, but it has also be, um, um, you have to move the mode, the mesh, mesh editing mode uh, while you are um, also warping, because uh, there you can also save the changes within this file. Okay, let's have a look into our curve background picture with the warp we have done. So it's looking actually okay to me. Do we have any questions so far? No, the last part was very impressive, I think. Um, and yeah, I can say again, uh, leave the uh, editing mesh mode to save uh, in the file. That was a pretty uh, strong recommendation there. So keep it in mind, please. No yeah, more that's cool. other questions there, though. No. Thank you, Pari. No more questions. Okay. Um, that's actually, uh, I think, all we uh, all wanted to know, um, all I wanted to say um, and talk about. Um, if you do not have any questions more, um, then I go back to my presentation and check again. Yeah, submesh. Oh, I have just explained it um, in within the Pandora's box. Um, yeah, the next important thing is uh, please um, leave us a feedback on our forum um, and let us know uh, what you want to do um, in the next webinars, what are the topics you want to hear about it and check our YouTube channel um, for the webinars you have missed. Thank you for watching me today. Wait, and uh, Thomas, Shabon, thank you for helping. Yeah, wait a yeah. second. We have a few questions incoming. Let me check if, ah, okay. if we go for uh, answer them live, or we maybe stay some minutes left, or I stay some minutes le uh, here to answer them uh, in the chat. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, there's one question uh, to show the black compensation tool. Uh, I think you're talking about the black level uh, or the um, yeah the black level of the um, of the projectors to to um, to adjust that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is the correct webinar to do that. Uh, you can think about that, um, Pari, if you want to do that. And there yeah. is another question. Should I configure the mesh in the output, but in a, a different sequence? That's a good question. In a different sequence. So if you have a different scene or... Uh... Yeah, or maybe we, you can use a special uh, sequence for the output settings or something like that. That's right. That's right. Um, so you can create another sequence uh, for your output and camera settings, and then um, there you can um, um, just set your your output settings, um, and you do not have to uh, extend your uh, container anymore um, to three hours. Um, you can just um, stop your now pointer within this container and um, yeah, have your settings. Thanks. Yeah. What do you think about the black level compensation 
tool should we do i'm i'm not pretty sure if this is correct here so maybe i don't know this is not a, maybe a long... yeah another webinar maybe but which one or, um... i don't know you have to think about it. I don't know. Yeah. So this is actually not. So uh, I I think it's a good idea to prepare that prepare that a little bit. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, you can um, you can write us an email to the support, and uh, we'll be happy to to give you support via email on that. Uh, so yeah, reach out to our support email address. Did I put it in there? No. Uh, let me just shortly put it in here. Support.pandorasbox at risty.com. There you go. Mm, I just wanted to mention something. Um, this was not actually a replacement of our 2D uh, and um, training, 2D uh, um, training mapping. Uh, it was just a, um, just a part, um, and the most important points you have to think about it. But um, at the end, um, you have to practice it. That's a very practicing tool. So, um, and it needs experience. All right. So there are no more incoming questions. So I think we're good on that. Thank you, Pari. Uh, very nice. Thank you, Thomas. See you next time then. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.